What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Lang, man. I'm back here with another reaction video, Slime. And right now, I'm about to react to Forensic Files, and this one's called The Sniper's Trial. Now, with Forensic Files and the case videos that I do on the channel, um, you guys already know, uh, these are my favorite videos to do besides my music and my funny video reactions, you feel me? Because with the Forensic Files and the case videos, you feel me, you get the, the real, you feel me? And it's real like this really happened you feel me like it's not it's not the made up tv like it's not the scripted t like no this actual actually really happened you feel me and it'd be the most like i always tell y'all it'd be the most scandalous crazy of stories like and you would never think these people that they so-called love or so-called you know what i'm saying mess with you feel me in the and and majority of the time of these episodes it always be a person that you know that they that 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 claim they love the other and then they end up you know you feel me so it really and it also teaches you about like how to be aware you feel me and like just stay alert you feel me like forensic files in the case videos just teaches you a lot like about like life you feel me and how quick like you know what i'm saying somebody's decision could could you feel me so it's crazy and this episode right here a lot of y'all been hitting me to react to for a minute you feel me y'all like lane bro you gotta react to this episode you feel me so we here and you feel me and you already know uh if y'all new over here make sure to hit that sub button you feel me and make sure to check out all the reactions you feel me like because a lot of y'all like y'all just y'all don't come up like bro a lot of y'all be sleeping on react like bro just tap in with slime you feel me like why not you feel me like bro they're just as dope as this one you got to watch like you feel me so Bro, just hit that sub button for slime, you feel me? And it's free. Like, you don't even, like, a lot of y'all be acting like it costs money to hit this up. Like, it's free. You feel me? So hit that sub button. Stop playing. You feel me? But this that Forensic Files with that Sniper's Child Slime. And if y'all hearing noise in, like, the background, you feel me? Like, I told y'all in my other reactions, like, right now, I'm, I'm in Wisconsin visiting, visiting some of the homies. So, yeah. So feel me just bear with me you feel me but this that forensic files sniper's child slime let's get into a slime let's go for three terrifying weeks the eyes of the world were on virginia and maryland a serial sniper terrorized the community 13 people were hit 10 of them died this is how forensic science and solid police work combined to solve the case. On October 2nd, 2002, police in Montgomery County, Maryland were investigating a number of shooting deaths. 55-year-old James Martin was felled by one bullet while putting groceries into his car. 39-year-old Sonny Buchanan was killed by a single gunshot while mowing a lawn. A 54-year-old cab driver was gunned down while filling his car with gas. Nothing like this has ever happened in Montgomery County. Uh, this is a very safe community. Uh, our homicide rate just increased by 25% in one day. All looked like the work of the same perpetrator. Police knew each victim was shot from 100 to 200 yards away, but they didn't know where the shooter was located. The FBI used television and film animation software to build models of the crime scenes to determine where the shooter was positioned. And since the shooter got away cleanly, some believed that two people were involved, a spotter and a shooter. My theory was there was a driver with him, that that's how he was getting away. You kill one person, you kill two people. I think that, was a, that would be a pretty good day, you know, for a normal psychopathic murderer. But now you go on to the third to fourth within two hours. So at that point, I felt as though there were two people the fourth victim was 34-year-old Sarah Ramos, shot and killed while sitting on a bench outside this post office. A 25-year-old nanny was shot at another gas station. We need an ambulance at the corner of Walt and Connecticut. A woman was vacuuming her car. Something blew up. She's unconscious. She's got blood coming out of her nose. And 
72-year-old Pascal Charlot was shot and killed while crossing a Washington, D.C. street. A witness reported seeing an older model four-door Chevrolet leaving the area of the shooting with its lights off. We feel like we probably have a skilled shooter uh, and, and that does heighten our concern. And these last three shootings provided police with their first forensic evidence. Bullet fragments removed from the victims were large enough for forensic analysis. We do what was called a fracture parts match in an attempt to see if the, it's basically like trying to assemble a jigsaw puzzle. As the bullet goes through the barrel, the lands and grooves inside mark each bullet. The sniper was using 223 caliber bullets. The marks on fragments from the last three victims were all from the same weapon. The bullets were hollow point bullets designed to do considerable damage. And that's the idea behind a hollow point bullet is to increase the frontal area of the bullet by opening up. This goes out at about 3,400 feet per second. When it hits a body, it traumatizes the body just from the impact along with the... Then it tumbles around in the body. The next day, a 43-year-old woman was shot in a shopping center parking lot, this time farther south in Spotsylvania County, Virginia. Fortunately, she survived. Some witnesses said they saw a white van or truck in the vicinity of the shootings. But with few other leads, investigators hoped the new science of geographical profiling would help identify the killer. A serial sniper had already shot seven people in Virginia and Maryland, and many in the community were starting to panic. Investigators had little physical evidence, so they turned to some newer techniques of crime solving. For years, the police sciences have used stuff from physics, chemistry, biology, all the hard sciences. Now we're starting to see development of tools for policing from the, the social and the soft sciences, psychology, criminology, sociology. Investigators asked Kim Rosmo to do a geographic profile of the killer. Rosmo is a former Canadian police detective who invented the computer software that's used. Serial and stranger crimes have a problem of information overload. Too many suspects, too many tips. It's not uncommon for these lists to be in the hundreds and even thousands. It's like the classic needle in the haystack problem. It may be there, but where do you start? Rosmo believes that criminals operate within a predictable distance from where they live. So he entered the locations of all the shootings into his computer program which contains information gathered from thousands of earlier case studies. Criminals are lazy. Now, criminals are also concerned about committing crimes too close to their home. So there will be a bit of a buffer zone around there. But there's a point where their desire to operate in their comfort zone balances their desire for anonymity. The computer maps where that balance occurs. And then the computer system generates for us, after a number of calculations, up to a million what's called a jeopardy surface, three-dimensional probability surface showing us the most likely location of offender residence. The crime scenes are shown in yellow or green. The perpetrator's likely home is shown in red or orange. Police also asked the FBI for a behavioral profile of the sniper. Both the strength and weakness of behavioral profiling is that it's based primarily on the study of individuals who have committed past crimes and identifies what is common among them. Based on past criminal history, behavioral profilers say a spree killer is usually a white male in his late 20s to early 30s, high school educated, and is most likely divorced. No profile can solve a crime. You need physical evidence and a witness or a confession to do that. Science is, is an asset. Science helps. But people, talking to people, getting information from people is our best ally. But 
police were certain of one thing. The killer or killers were watching the media. It's common that they follow it in the media. They often may interject themselves into the investigation in some way. Um, again, that, that kind of feeds their ego. So he may have been watching when Chief Booth assured the public that area children were safe. Montgomery County officials say tomorrow will be a normal school day. On October 7th, the sniper shot and wounded an eighth grader as he entered his school. Anxious. Bro, I hope whoever is doing this to these people, bro, I hope they, bro, I hope they have a playing field with you in the pen. You feel me? Because you out here killing, you out here killing and sniping people. Bro, you sniping kids, bro. Feel me? So, to me, you deserve everything you're... I, bro. People like you don't even deserve to be walking on this earth. Feel me? Because you out here doing this just to do it. Feel me? And you out here doing it. It's like you enjoy it. But what about if somebody did that to one of your family? One of your... One of your closest people you wouldn't you wouldn't it would be different wouldn't it exactly parents questioned whether their children were safe at all i'm just happy that my dad came to get me he's happy because i did come to get him i came to pick him up all of our victims have been innocent have been defenseless but now we're stepping over the line because our children don't deserve this. In a wooded area, 150 yards from the school, police found a cover to a pen, a shell casing, and a tarot card, the kind used in fortune telling. The shell casing was a 223 caliber, a very common round, which can be fired from many different rifles. The killer left the death card inscribed with the words dear policeman i am god within days there were three more shootings 53 year old dean myers was killed at a gas station near manassas virginia then kenneth bridges at a gas station in fredericksburg virginia as a policeman stood just 50 yards away then, female FBI analyst Linda Franklin was killed in the parking lot of a hardware store. Witnesses continued to report seeing a white van or truck in the vicinity of the shootings. I've ordered the full resources of the federal government to help local law enforcement officials in their, eff in their efforts to capture this person. One tool from the federal government was a high-tech military surveillance plane able to detect the burst of flame made by a rifle when fired. But it didn't help. The next shooting happened far from the surveillance area. A man was shot and wounded outside a steakhouse in Ashland, Virginia, 90 miles from Washington. He's willing to change his M.O. Well, he listens to the media. That's one way we know that he's careful in taking his notes and doing his reconnaissance. In the woods next to the restaurant, the sniper left another message with an ominous warning. Bro, this dude, bro, he think, bro, this man think all oh, this is a game, bro. He think killing... And he trying to play it, bro. You playing it, bro. You going to get caught, bro. Feel me? And when you do, I hope, bro, you, I hope you get everything that you asked for. Because you asked for all this. Because you wanted to run around here and kill and all that. And think it was cool. And But at the end of the day. Your choices, there's always consequences. Feel me? Remember that. So I hope they caught you. And I hope wherever you went, bro, you feel me? To me, you deserve a death penalty. So I hope I hope they give it to whoever, whoever this may be doing this. I hope you get the death penalty. You feel me? Because you need to get 
treated how, cause bro, you are like, you need. After the 12th shooting in a horrifying spree, the sniper left another note. It was a four page letter enclosed in a plastic bag along with a shell casing. The letter demanded $10 million to be transferred into a credit card account belonging to an Arizona bus driver whose wallet had been stolen prior to the attacks. After 10, 12 shootings, he decides he wants money now. I think the money aspect of it is an afterthought. It's just like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in charge of everybody. I got life and death in my hand. Well, why don't I ask for $10 million? Why don't I ask for a billion dollars? What tends to get people in trouble is their own narcissism. The notion of you give somebody enough rope and they eventually hang themselves. Riddled with poor grammar and misspellings, the four-page letter referred to us indicating more than one person was involved. The note warned that if the demands were not met, more shootings would follow. The next morning, 35-year-old Conrad Johnson was killed as he was stepping out of his bus. A note similar to the previous one was discovered in a wooded area close to the site. The snipers also made repeated attempts to make contact with investigators through the sniper tip line. Most were messages beginning with, call me God. But it was another piece of communication that gave the killers away. The sniper called a Catholic priest in Ashland, Virginia, asking for forgiveness for the sniper shootings and also mentioned a murder he committed in Montgomery, Alabama. Interestingly, police in Montgomery, Alabama had an unsolved murder. A month earlier, two employees of a liquor store had been shot, one fatally while locking up the store for the night. Kelly Adams survived the shooting, but she didn't see the shooter. I could have died. I just don't take things for granted anymore. Witnesses saw one of the suspects drop a magazine while running from the scene. Forensic experts in Alabama tested the magazine for latent fingerprints using a series of techniques including magnetic powder and the chemical ninhydrin. They also tried super glue fuming. In an airtight chamber, a small amount of superglue is heated, which vaporizes, then attaches to biological materials. These techniques produce several usable fingerprints, which federal authorities scanned into the computer system called APHIS. The APHIS system is actually an acronym for Automated Fingerprint Identification System. And what it is, it's a computer that will actually scan a pattern type of a latent print. The computer makes millions of comparisons that would take a human being years and uses numerous government databases. In the immigration database, investigators had a match. The fingerprints on the magazine belonged to 17-year-old Lee Boyd Malvo, an immigrant from Jamaica. Police later learned his nickname was Sniper given to him by a man who used to date Malvo's mother, 41-year-old John Muhammad. Malvo and Muhammad had once lived in this house in Tacoma, Washington. Neighbors said they often heard gunfire from the home's backyard. Lee Boyd Malvo and John Muhammad were now the prime suspects. But where were they? And could they be found before they killed again? crazy bro it's a this is a it's a this is a this is a kid and his pops doing this if this is true that's crazy that means they really they 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 bro he taught that man taught his son how to kill and he was already killing so that means he was taught how to kill and it seemed like in the picture he was in the in the middle they they feel me and he and he and he and he brought he he 
he he he he took it to his son, bro. And that's that's crazy. Wow. A telephone call from the killer. A fingerprint from a magazine cover. And ballistic tests had led police to two suspects. 17-year-old Lee Boyd Malvo and 41-year-old John Muhammad. A check of motor vehicle registrations revealed Muhammad owned a 1990 Chevrolet Caprice with New Jersey license plates. Information that was released to the media. The public is requested to call if they have any information regarding Muhammad's whereabouts or any other information that investigators could use to, to locate this individual. Just a few hours later, an alert truck driver noticed the car in a highway rest stop. Police arrested Malvo and Mohammed without incident. The two had been sleeping in the car. In the trunk, police found a semi-automatic Bushmaster rifle with a small tripod and a scope. Also in the car, was a laptop computer and a global positioning satellite receiver or GPS. Satellites in space can instantly locate a car with a GPS receiver and provide maps of the area, ensuring a quick getaway. On the laptop computer were drafts of letters with language similar to previous communications from the snipers. Also in the computer, were directions to locations of the attacks, some marked by a skull and crossbones. And investigators found a list entitled People to Die Later. On it were the names of the Ashland, Virginia priest, and someone at a local radio station. The rifle from Muhammad's car was sent to ATF headquarters to principal examiner Walter Dandridge. The investigators want this information uh, yesterday. And the lands and grooves of the rifle matched the bullet fragments taken from the victims. The results of forensic testing are that the weapon seized from the vehicle occupied by Muhammad has been forensically determined to be the murder weapon. The only fingerprints on the rifle were those of Lee Boyd Malvo. However, both suspects were found to be sources of DNA lodged in the ridges of the rifle scope on the murder weapon. Malvo's DNA was also found on the pen casing found near the school shooting. Muhammad's DNA was discovered on the plastic bag containing the letter found in Ashland, Virginia. The car was modified to conceal the sniper's actions. To illustrate how, Forensic files obtained an identical car and had its trunk and rear seat modified in the same way as police found the sniper's car. There was a four inch hole cut in the trunk and the portion of the back seat was missing. As this demonstration shows, a shooter could easily get inside the trunk and fire through the hole. This is the view looking through the scope of a rifle. Combine that with the anonymity of shooting through a hole in a car trunk and a driver leaving the scene within seconds of the shooting, and it's easy to see how they could get away so cleanly. Even a policeman standing near the car might not have noticed anything suspicious. Any muzzle flash would have been sheltered from aerial surveillance. Geographic profiling had assumed the snipers lived near the first group of victims in a way they did. The mobile bunker they called home allowed them to reach the balanced geographic profiling counted on near to home, but also anonymous. But there was still a question of why the killings occurred. There's got to be a more people just don't go out and kill people. Mohammed's ex-wife thinks she knows. She thinks the killings were a setup so that when Muhammad killed her, it would appear to be a random killing by the sniper. Muhammad's wife lived in Maryland, 
near the Jeopardy area identified as the killer's comfort zone by the geographical profile. Forensic evidence is very important to prosecute the case. Never ever profile, never clairvoyant. We don't play that. What you play is hard detective work. John Muhammad and Lee Boyd Malvo were both tried and convicted of two counts of capital murder. Muhammad was also convicted of conspiracy to commit murder and of a firearms violation. Muhammad was sentenced to death. Malvo was sentenced to life in prison. Nah, to me, bro, they should have both been sentenced to death, bro. They was out here killing for no reason, for their own enjoyment, you feel me? And they was... They were both sick in the head, bro. Like, feel me? Like. The courts more and more like to see hard physical evidence and forensic evidence and ballistics in particular can provide that because there can really be no question if a particular bullet is matched to a particular gun that can put the smoking gun into somebody's hand. I'm going to end it right there, Slime. You feel me? Um, y'all let me know how y'all felt about this episode. To me, they both deserve to get sentenced to death. But I'm glad one of them did. You feel me? But to me, both of them should have been sentenced to death. Like, bro, they was... Come on, man. You feel me? But y'all let me know. You feel me? How y'all feel about this. You feel me? And like I said, if y'all new over here, make sure to hit that sub button. You feel me? Make sure to check out the other Forensic File episodes or my case reactions that i've done you feel me um and check out the music reactions and the funny reaction videos too like check them all out you feel me and i love y'all y'all stay safe and i'm gonna get at y'all on the next one slime one